In the complex events of North American history, there are moments that remain hidden for generations to emerge as revelations that challenge our understanding of the past. In 1783, we witnessed one of these secret parts during the negotiations for the Paris Peace. Fair number square but very important issue became apparent. A map that would redraw the lines of North America and show how much more territory the British intended to give to the newly independent United States. As the northernmost line on this map shows, all of Lower Canada could have been part of the United States to change things today. But why didn't that happen? Welcome to another video from the Geography Tour channel. On September 3, 1783, Britain officially recognized American independence and ended the American Revolutionary War. Under the Treaty of Paris, the British Crown ceded most of its territory east of the Mississippi River to the United States, which more than doubled the size of the United States and paved the way for westward expansion. The United States acquired from Great Britain valuable land previously reserved for the natives, originally designated in the Royal Proclamation of 1763, regardless of the many treaties previously concluded with the native populations. They were handed over to the United States. After the signing of the Treaty of Paris, negotiations to determine new boundaries on different continent posed a major challenge in the absence of accurate mapping sources. However, both sides agreed to use examples of a common map. Therefore, the main focus of these negotiations was John Mitchell's map of North America, which had published a cartographic masterpiece in 1755. Famous for its meticulous attention to colonial claims and territorial boundaries, this map was used by both sides during negotiations, but the relations that lay beneath its surface were hidden until the late 19th century. The problem that can be seen in Mitchell's plan was this bias towards Britain, which made him magnify the aspirations of Britain, which was often at the cost of claiming Spanish, French, and native lands. For example, on the Florida-Georgia border, Mitchell drew a southern boundary line well within the territory claimed by Spain which was considerably further south than the Spanish claims. Also in Alabama, there is a small note that reads, A Spanish fort built in 1719 and said to be soon after being abandoned by Spain. Also significantly, the map would have increased the prominence of the Iroquois nation as a British subject, making it illegal for the French to operate in lands claimed by the Iroquois. Interestingly, this establishment of British influence on the North American canvas, as depicted by Mitchell, would be in America's favor in an ironic twist. This decorum inadvertently provided a wider territory for the Americans to claim during the Paris negotiations, thereby expanding their territorial ambitions. So in the midst of those negotiations for the Treaty of Paris, Richard Oswald, as secretary of the British delegation, undertook the task of annotating the British version of Mitchell's map with crimson lines, which showed how the border between the United States and the rest of British North America would be. And later, this unique interpretation was known as the Red Line Map, which took place without the knowledge of the Americans. It is noteworthy that this map shows the northernmost red line extending the linear boundary along the 49th parallel and extending eastward from its present terminus at the Lake of the Boots. About midway through present-day Quebec, this red border veered northeastward in another unbroken course, leading to a point on the northern coastline of Labrador. The area enclosed between this line and the present boundary of the United States and Canada includes considerable portions of the provinces of Ontario and Quebec, nearly the whole of Newfoundland and Labrador, and the whole extent of Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. But if we assume that nothing special happened in history with the termination of this demarcation, now this area, which is more than 600,000 square miles, would belong to the United States. This made the United States to be recognized as the second largest country in the world after Russia by surpassing Canada, and Canada also fell from the second place by reducing its area and took the fourth place behind China. In addition, the current region is considered one of the most important regions of Canada, which constitutes 80% of the country's population, and this causes Canada to lose its economy and power, and not be remembered as an important country in the world. However, fate did not happen in this way during the proceedings in Paris and according to the negotiations, three distinct border configurations were presented. And finally, the final proposal presented by Oswald, as accepted in November 1782 by each place on two sides. This configuration was subsequently included in the final treaty signed on September 3, 1783, 
and nevertheless, the terms of this treaty were less beneficial to the American side, which could not obtain this huge area. Thus, according to Oswald's map referred to, in a divergence, a considerable portion of the land south of Oswald's marked red line eventually became part of Canada. Also, after the treaty, Oswald gave his red line map to King George III, and over time, this map found its way to the British Library, where it is also known as the King George map, with a tangible link to the complexities of diplomatic manners and unknown lands that could be while the borders of the United States and Canada did not undergo the transformation predicted by the Red Line map. Its unfulfilled potential reminds us that the course of history can be focused on small details. In short, the Red Line map revealed during the Paris negotiations of 1783 continues to prompt us to ponder what would have happened if this had happened. Thank you very much for being with me until the end of the video and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Also, if you're interested in interesting US borders, I will soon prepare playlists where I will post videos about strange US borders and see you in another video.